Good evening, and if any of Jonathan Aitken's fellow inmates are watching during Prisoner's Television Hour, we'd like you to know that despite what he says, he actually reckons you're all a bunch of soft puffs. <laughs> In, in the news this week, at Customs Control in Calais, as the import ban continues, a British cow finally loses patience with the French. <laughs> Showbiz news, and Jerry Adams is a surprise guest on Through the Keyhole. And in Rome, a rather worried man inspects the negatives from the night he spent with Mother Teresa. <laughs> on Ian Hislop's team is a BBC journalist who appeared on one award-winning TV comedy show in 1967, and after tonight, uh, will still have appeared on one award-winning TV comedy show, John Sargent. And with Paul Merton tonight as the editor of Tribune, the official journal for the left wing of the Labour Party, providing a critical socialist perspective for both its readers, Mark Seddon. <laughs> Thank you. Round one is what we've cleverly entitled the first round. Ian and John. Oh, this is the non-republic of Australia. <laughs> These are people voting to have more royal walkabouts. There's the Queen. She's quietly pleased with what's happened. <laughs> I think they did very well. If you think of other politicians saying, what do we learn from this? And what they learn is, don't kiss babies, don't give interviews, and don't wave too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so how did Queenie uh, spend the day after hearing the fantastic news that she was still head of state in Australia? She went on a binge with Chris Evans. <laughs> <laughs> She actually presented the World Cup to this huge, great Australian Republican who had to sit there and go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yes, uh, this is uh, the outcome of the Australian referendum, which uh, has led to the Queen being retained as head of state. Uh, following the referendum, the Queen and Prince Philip are to visit Australia as part of a charm offensive. The Queen taking care of the charm and Prince Philip taking care of the charm. Nearly a hundred years ago, one Australian journalist described Edward VII as a turf-swindling, card-sharping, wife-debauching, boozing rowdy. And you can't get higher praise from an Australian. <laughs> uh, Paul and Mark, don't mention the wall. This is all about the Berlin Wall. I think it's all gone rather wrong because they forgot to invite the East Germans to the big party. You noticed that Lady Thatcher wasn't there? Yes. 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 Neither was Popeye. Funny, no, that was it? <laughs> What were they up to? <laughs> I think they were worried that she would start rebuilding it. <laughs> <laughs> and she wants to move it from Berlin, you know, to the west. Like, sort of, Calais. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, yes, who else was there? Who did we see in the footage? George. George, George Bush and mm. the Mr Gorbachev and his daughter. And, of course, you mustn't forget the Scorpions, the German heavy metal band who were there. Mm -hmm. That was the lead singer, was it? Mm. Singing... Wir sind eine Volk. <laughs> <laughs> we are great you're laughing, but you don't know what you're laughing at. <laughs> you're just laughing to show off. <laughs> no, no, they do know what it means. It's only you who don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody in this country speaks German apart from me. <laughs> I can't believe you only just noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Which, this is Britain that we're living in, isn't it? We lost the war, did no one tell you? <laughs> I, I went to sleep, I woke up, I was in a shower, everything was different. No, that's Dallas. <laughs> um, that was the reference I was making, but thank yes, you for pointing uh, it out. <laughs> I thought I'd underline Perhaps it. I should have said it in German. <laughs> uh, Wind of Change is what the name of the song was. Wind of Change, fair mm. enough. Uh, you mentioned George Bush, yes, he was there. And his, um, what's his son been up to this week? George Bush Jr. Uh, mm. um, he got mm. embarrassed. He's a presidential candidate. He couldn't name the recent um, strongman who's taken over Pakistan. Whereas John could do that any time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I won't, but I could. <laughs> Have a look at this. Can you name the president of Chechnya? No, can you? Prime Minister of India? Uh, the new Prime Minister of India is... Uh, uh, no. The new Pakistan general has just been elected. He's, he's uh, not elected. This guy took over office. He appears he's going to bring stability to the country, and I think that's good news for the subcontinent. And you can name him? General. I can name the general. And it's? General. So who is it, John? General? No, I said I could. I, I didn't say I would. <laughs> Uh, 
do we get a point if we name it? Okay, go on then. Musharraf. Very good, Ooh. but no, you don't get a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is the 10th Prime anniversary... Minister of India? Uh, yeah, go on. Vajpayee? Oh. President of Chechnya? Don't know, two out of three, give us so, a point. Unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it is the uh, 10th anniversary celebrations of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Uh, curiously, the uh, old command post of the East Berlin Border Guards is now a, a second-hand car business, and in an eerie repetition of history, people still rarely get more than 30 yards from it before a bang and a cloud of smoke brings into the wall. Uh, Ian and John, read all about it. Frank Dobson. Oh, and that's his PR man, Matthew Freud. Oh, and um, everyone says it's a stunt, the fact that Frank Dobson's living with um, Chris Evans. Because <laughs> um, they've both got the same publicity and, and cynical people say they've just made it up. But mm. I think they're going to get married. Um, right. And they'll have lovely children. They'll have glasses and a beard. <laughs> I think you may have a chance of being selected as the Labour candidate for the London Mayor. Who? Dobson? I think there's a chance. Not a chance. Well... <laughs> Mark's wearing a vote Ken Livingstone badge. Yes, I'm, I'm up for Ken. Are you? Mm. Yes. <laughs> I've been looking into this. There's, there is a cunning plan, I think. Um, as far as I can make out, uh, Downing Street don't want Ken to be candidate, uh, so they set up this electoral college to block him. And Labour Party headquarters don't want Ken to be candidate, so they're just going to block him altogether. So either which way, uh, Ken gets blocked. But it doesn't always work, does it? Because they tried to stop you being elected. To the NEC, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yes, we, um, we got wind of this. We demanded a bit of democracy. What, in the Labour Party? <laughs> it's, a, it's dying out. But it's, it's something that ought to be cherished, along with socialism. NEC, that's car parks, isn't it? <laughs> so it is, yes. Uh, Frank Dobson's beleaguered campaign to become uh, London Mayor and the news this week that he's enlisted the help of uh, PR guru Matthew Freud... Uh, Dobson has fiercely denied being given confidential lists of addresses by Labour Party HQ, although party member Paul Letton told the BBC that he'd seen the disputed list on a computer screen in Dobson's campaign office. It was definitely the Labour membership list. It said at the top, Labour membership list. <laughs> <laughs> certainly is a reasonable clue. <laughs> and uh, finally, Paul and Mark. And finally. That's uh, Bill Giles, the weatherman. There's another weatherman. Um, that was just, uh, there's, uh, <laughs> another one? <laughs> the other weather people, uh, weather persons in the Weather Bureau have, um, said that, uh, Bill Giles is a bit of a, uh, um, a weather tyrant. He goes around saying, mm. uh, that's not good enough. More clouds. Less mist. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And, uh, he's a bit of a bully, so, say, some of the other people in the meteorological office. Yes. Could you name them? Uh, no. Could you? Yes. Uh, but you don't want to. Rough and <laughs> uh, We've moved on from oh, there. Uh, it's actually David Lee and Richard Edgar. Oh, yes. Are the two victims of his bullying, they allege. Uh, you could always tell that when he was on, the weather was that bit worse, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> he used to, you know, move the clouds about. I yeah. thought... Just boss. to be nasty. I yeah. thought it was boxy. Mm. I mean, I don't know him personally, but... <laughs> He stuck a magnetic cloud over East Anglia and it started to rain. Yeah. Just because he, uh, he, he, he was annoyed. Mm. Any, any whole South of England he hated. Yeah. Mm. Not yeah. just the people in the office. Absolutely. People, under, people turned a ten foot of water because he's They're in right. a bad mood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just because he got angry. We all yeah. had to pay for it. Exactly. It was, for years and years this was going on. Now it's out in the open. Yeah, good. <laughs> so it should be. Yeah. So do you news reporters mix much with the weather guys? Or? No, not now. <laughs> not after this. No. <laughs> Won't touch him now. No. Uh, they respond so savagely to the slightest comment. Right. You know, they're very sensitive. They're artiste. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite weather presenter? No, not really. I used to. We used to be very close, but I don't want to discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is uh, Bill Giles, who this week launched an appeal, uh, having been found guilty at an internal inquiry of bullying his staff at the Met Office. The uh, inquiry heard how Bill Giles' behaviour had left weatherman uh, David Lee in a deep depression, although he did tend to brighten up around tea time. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, both teams are as worryingly close as Jonathan Aitken is to his cellmate, equal as they are on four each.
Round two this week sees the necessary, if unwelcome, return of the tabloid headline, an art form just below Christmas card greeting on the ladder of literary excellence. Uh, Ian and John. Winnie the Brown leaves lid on the honey. This is all about the budget, and the honey is perfectly normal sweeteners for the next election. Gordon Brown, he's just presented a, a pre-budget budget statement report. He's giving away television sets instead of money to pensioners. He's just giving things away. What's wrong with that? Just giving things to all of us. Well, perhaps before Christmas. Would like something I don't else. think there's anything wrong in that. I think. I and mean, if you're good. a pensioner, would you like a television, or would you like a bucket of coal, or or some food, <laughs> or something? It'd be nice to have some choice in all of this. Yeah, he, I've got a choice. Free television, kicking the balls. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Are you suggesting the free television license for pensioners might not be? that well received by all pensioners. They're just saying, well, if you're 75, all you must want to do is sit in front of the television. There are lots of pensioners that like to go abseiling and, uh, and trekking across the Gobi Desert and all sorts of things like that. But should they be encouraged? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you know Gordon Brown? Very well. <laughs> how, how is he as a man? He's fine, yes. No, um, More we get on extremely well. It's a bit more transmit than receive about him, but... <laughs> the Chancellor launched one pensioner-friendly measure that means that all old people over 75 will be eligible for a free television licence worth over £100. All they have to do is apply by visiting www.tvlicence.com <laughs> backslash pensioner. Uh, Paul and Mark, your brief revolution reveals a 23-ton ice cube. Oh, now, is this the mammoth they discovered the other day in the ice? <clears throat> the mammoth in the ice? The ice that was uh, the mammoth that was in the ice? <laughs> the French have said they won't have this mammoth in France. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 250,000 years old, yep, which so they think is dangerous to eat. <laughs> It's and they think like the over 30 months, yes, really, isn't they it? They say, you know, on the edge, but we think, no. <laughs> <laughs> and where did they find this, um, this mammoth? In the Arctic Circle. Yes. Oh, in um, Musharraf. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Siberia, a place called Katanga. Uh, rather bizarrely for any Katanga? Lenny. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's in the Congo. <laughs> Not anymore, Mark. Congo? <laughs> it's in Siberia now. That's global warming for you. <laughs> And what's the name they've given it? Um, Gerald. <laughs> Gerald Mammoth. Zarkov. Well, I only told you. I mean, <laughs> you don't want me to take part, I'll just go home. <laughs> and it, it was named by the explorer who was... Uh, did you read this? Mr. Zarkov. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Big. Mr. Big. 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 Is he the one behind all those crimes we keep reading about? <laughs> Lisa looking for Mr. B. <laughs> uh, we can actually see Mr. B. Um, it's going to be much more disappointing when it melts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's hardly nothing there, you know. It's just it might just be two tusks next yeah. to a Yamaha motorbike. Mm. <laughs> They're going to clone it, aren't they? They're going to use the DNA yeah. um, with, with a, an elephant. And Jimmy Savile. <laughs> <laughs> How's about that, then? <laughs> and create the world's first woolly mammoth DJ. Yeah. Yes. Um, and what's the problem of using an elephant? Well, an elephant isn't, strictly speaking, the same species as a mammoth, so it may be rejected. The elephant isn't woolly, that's what I've noticed. Yeah. <laughs> they're not at all woolly elephants when you get close to them. Really? <laughs> but they're worn down by giving kids oh. rides. <laughs> Some elephants are as smooth as a pebble. <laughs> Can uh, you skim them? I beg your pardon? Skim them, not skin them, skim them. Like that. Yeah, across bounce. water, yeah. Mm. Elephants? Yeah, oh, yeah, of <laughs> well, you, you go to any seaside resort that's near a zoo, <laughs> gangs of kids, I mean, if they're people from tower blocks, they've got nothing better to do. They get hold of elephants <laughs> and they skin them across the water, and there's some old deer in a rowing boat saying, oh, it seems to be a boom, boom, right on top of it. Now he's talking sense. <laughs> you get a tusk for your rollocks, you soon know about it, I tell you. <laughs> This is the uh, proposed cloning uh, of the mammoth, recently discovered in Siberia. Uh, Dutch paleontologist Dick Moll said, I've been working on mammoths for more than 25 years, and this is a dream for me, to find the soft parts and touch them and even smell them. 
If every man needed a holiday. <laughs> or a tube of ointment. Mm. Which, uh, frozen waste means at the end of this uh, fresh spell, it's, uh, well, uh, both teams are desperate to remain inseparable, sharing, as they do, six points. Who is the odd one out and why? That's what our panel are about to tell us, with barely a moment's pause and unnerving precision, as Paul will now demonstrate his odd ones out being. Kenneth Clark, Jason Orange, Stella Remington, and Sister Virtus. I don't know who Sister Virtus is, I'm afraid. Um, so, Kenneth Clark, what do we know about? Desert Island Discs, uh, saxophones, hush puppies. <laughs> Anything to do with any of those? Do you want a clue? Yeah, go on then. It all revolves around Sister Virtus. Is she the centre of the solar system? <laughs> Is she about to nick Stella Remington's medal? Is she one of the pickpocket nuns that's ruining the West End for our tourists? <laughs> She's a criminal. She pretends to be a nun. Her real name is Mr. B. <laughs> Jason Orange is the only one that's sucking his surname. <laughs> I'll give you another clue that it's a fair question. It's about, oh, it's about dodging your fare on the underground, isn't mm. it? They've all been caught travelling in the underground about paying their fare, and uh, the sister said it's a genuine mistake because I've, I've been living in a nunnery for 15 years, and I didn't know. I'll give you one for that. The answer is they've all been caught without a valid ticket from the London <laughs> Underground, except for Sister Virtus, a nun who was recently prosecuted uh, and taken to court by London buses for sleeping past her stop. Um, oh, what a yeah. serious thing. Mm. <laughs> Shocking. Do you know why she was sleeping? Yeah, she was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> She'd been drinking the wine that's named after her. <laughs> She'd risen at 5 a.m. to pray. And then after the third day, she rested. What do you mean she... <laughs> uh, Stella Remington uh, used an OAP pass before 9 a.m. Wow. Um, <laughs> mind you, fun. she's got a rather fancy bus pass, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, Kenneth Clark uh, had a, a Zone 1 ticket and travelled into Zone 2. Ooh. Hang in. <laughs> Clark, in fact, uh, denied uh, arguing with the ticket inspector, adding, uh, the matter was resolved without any fuss. I'm not the sort of person who goes around saying, don't you know who I am? Although, according to The Sun, one onlooker said, Mr. Clark kicked up a bit of a fuss. He said, don't you know who I am? <laughs> so uh, either a former Tory minister or a tabloid paper must be lying. And even more surprising, one of them must be telling the truth. <laughs> Having fallen asleep, Sister Virtus had her bus pass confiscated by an inspector, but the nun had the last laugh. She argued with the uniformed guard just long enough for seven singing Austrian children to make their escape. <laughs> uh, Mark, your choice selection consists of Terry Venables, Amanda Platel, Peter Mandelson and Monsanto. Ooh. Amanda Platel has just uh, written this Fleet Street Bonk Buster. She comes out as the, uh, as the heroine of the Fleet Street uh, Mafia who ran in the tabloids at the time. Peter Mandelson wrote a, a book just prior to the election, mm -hmm. which was a book so utterly banal that I can't remember the name of it. And uh, Terry Venables has written a book, I oh. think. So uh, the carrot's the odd one out, is it has not penned a book. Do you really well, think we make it that simple? <laughs> the carrot hasn't written I, a book. I think... No, I think <laughs> Oh, all the books have been withdrawn. This biography of yeah. Mandelson's been withdrawn. Amanda Platel's book, William Haig said, don't bring out this embarrassing book um, because um, delay it. So it's mm. just come out, and it was meant to come out last year. Terry Venable's book was withdrawn, and um, a book about Monsanto hasn't been withdrawn. It's been let go. Is the wrong answer. <laughs> uh, the enough. answer is that they are all the subjects of publications that have been pulped, uh, except for Amanda Platel. Uh, who has had to remove scenes from her raunchy new novel, Scandal, uh, in case they embarrass uh, Tory MPs. Uh, Monsanto have denied that by experimenting with genetic material, uh, they could be opening a can of worms, although they are believed to be developing a strain of worm that will be able to open its own can. <laughs> John, Lonesome George, Mick Jagger, Peter Snow, and prisoner CB9298. <laughs> CB9298 is uh, an old chum, and uh, he discovered not very long ago that he had another daughter. Peter Snow, not very long ago, discovered that he had another child that he wasn't expecting. 
And both of them said how lovely that was, but Mick Jagger wasn't very pleased when he was told he had another child. They've had their children found by DNA, whereas the, the turtle... It's mm. a tortoise, isn't it? Tortoise, Lonesome George, who lives in the Galapagos. Um, he's been celibate for so long, they've sent out DNA samples all over the world to try and match him up mm. with someone. A mammoth, um, a mammoth, in fact, I think. <laughs> Is Peter Snow the only one who's saying, who's Nick New Watermelon? <laughs> Is that the right answer? Yeah, it is the right answer. Oh, Very good. good. Uh, earlier this year, Peter Snow, confirmed by DNA tests to have fathered a child in the 1960s, survived a terrifying air crash near Seattle. It was all over in about seven seconds, but it was an extraordinary experience, <laughs> said the mother of his child. <laughs> and finally, in this round, Ian. Jeremy Paxman, Chris Tarrant, Idi Amin, and Michael Fish. Are they um, quiz show hosts? Paxman does University Challenge. Uh, Chris Tarrant, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh, Idi Amin, mm -hmm. Do You Want to Live? <laughs> isn't this about fishing? Chris Tarrant's a very keen fisherman, isn't he? He's a very, oh, very yes. keen fisherman. Mm -hmm. um, Idi Amin, I think, was also a very, very keen fisherman. He used to just sort of blow them out of the water with dynamite. <laughs> Jeremy Paxman, I can't remember now, was he against fishing or was he a keen fisherman? No, he's a very he's keen, keen fisherman. Is he a keen fisherman? Well, I say Michael Fish is the odd one out because he's not a keen fisherman, but he does have the surname Fish. Is the right answer. Yes, and Idi Amin now uh, fishes in the Red Sea, apparently, because he now lives in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and uh, eats a lot of oranges. That's right. And you know what his favourite TV stations are? He watches Saudi One, CNN and uh, the BBC. Oh, really? So, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy Paxman goes fishing to relax, which is something he needs to do more of if this recent edition of Newsnight is anything to go by. Uh, the um, mirror, have we got? Yes, the mirror of victory. That, I, don't know what, uh, that, uh, I haven't actually got that front page in front of me. Uh, the Times has the news that... I'm afraid I can't read that either. Um, <laughs> the Independent I have got here, which is... Uh, we haven't got the independent up there. The system isn't terribly helpful, really. I think I'll just leave it there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, Codswallop marks the end of uh, that round with uh, Ian and John taking a battering, trailing as they do 9 8. Missing Words is our most consistent round, underachieving every week, with its uh, frantic trawl through the week's headlines and the exciting inclusion of some less or more from this week's guest publication, The Redoubtable Modern Ferret, <laughs> which uh, calls itself The Ferret Lifestyle Magazine. It's a very new labour, isn't it? Modern Ferret. None of those old-fashioned ferrets <laughs> get rid of them. And so, pray silence for what criticised by Paxman? Everyone Newsnight. is criticised by Paxman. Fish, you can't bear them. <laughs> BBC management? Uh, Bloke whose job it is to put up the right newspaper caption <laughs> behind him on Newsnight. Uh, criticised by Paxman. Ferret. You, it's not from Modern Ferret, no. Um, <laughs> Golden Award for Hotel is what he was complaining about. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, this he is got shirty with that receptionist, didn't he? Do you know what he called her? Um, good Old morning, ferret. madam. I don't know. He referred to her as uh, Miss Now Sodoff. <laughs> well, you know, Polish people have got to work the same as everybody else. <laughs> it's not her fault. Uh, next, what? Uh, live like kings ferrets. and queens. Ferrets. Got to be uh, ferrets. Royalty. <laughs> you would think is the right answer, but ferrets is, in fact, uh, the right answer. That's uh, apparently if you buy them a galvanised black and green castle. Uh, if you'd like one of these, write to Friends of Ferrets, 490 Flop Road, New Jersey. <coughs> Uh, or contact the psychiatrist. Right. <laughs> uh, next, house sitter prepares to explain what? Car in bedroom. The burglary. Uh, Car in bedroom. Theory yeah. of relativity. A lot of people ask. <laughs> Ferret what, in house trousers, trousers, particularly. Car in bedroom. <laughs> You're obsessed with this car in bedroom, aren't you? Yeah, because it's right. Is the right answer, the car in bedroom. But then that was it a Land Rover? Mm -hmm. Somebody was driving a Land Rover and it just went down the hill and there's a bloke just sitting watching his house and sitting there and he just went out and made a cup of tea and his Land Rover smashed right through the, uh, through the roof. And do you know what happened to the Land Rover halfway down? Uh, I don't know. Went into second gear. <laughs> uh, no, the lights came on, apparently. Ooh, that's a bit spooky. 
I think it's a safety feature that Land Rover would probably be quite proud of to know. <laughs> it's a warning. <laughs> it is. You just sit in there reading the paper, the lights come on, don't bother looking out the window, just run for it. Uh, <laughs> next, a uh, banana boat crashes into what? Lighthouse. There was this boat that crashed into a lighthouse. It was full of bananas. It's definitely a lighthouse, because there was a bloke in the lighthouse saying, oh, it's getting, you know, should we go to bed? And he turned the light off and he forgot it was a lighthouse. <laughs> And the banana boat is a boat made out of this huge banana They're going along like this and they crash straight into it. It's virtually the right answer. Flashing lighthouses, in fact. But he didn't uh, turn the light off. It was, it was blaring. No one could believe that this man had hit the most known lighthouse. Mm. Well, he thought it was a Land Rover coming towards him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is 90 foot high and visible for 16 miles. That's the point of a lighthouse, isn't it? No mm. point in putting a lighthouse in a cupboard in Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> you want a big one on the coast. And finally, what wins most original calendar award? Nude ladies. Um, Pope Gregory. No, it's ferrets. Ferrets on sticks. <laughs> ferrets, ferrets, ferrets. WI ladies. Yeah, it's those people taking their kit off, isn't it? Uh, I think Paul was closer. It's ferret calendar is the right oh. answer. <laughs> Can I just ask something? Does Ian's thing actually go up to double figures? <laughs> I don't know, do you? <laughs> Give it a hit. Hit it. <laughs> uh, which uh, Endgame brings us uh, gagging to the end of tonight's mismatch, in which uh, this week's dimwits have been uh, Ian and John with nine, whilst this week's bright sparks have been Paul and Mark with 15. Well so the chance to ride on the Millennium Wheel to our winners, the chance to feed the huge team of hamsters that keep it going to our losers. <laughs> Uh, but before we allow our guests to the place from where they will eventually be asked to leave before any more damage is done, there's our caption competition to endure. Bamboo chair attacks bloke in ice. <laughs> is he saying my toenails need cutting? <laughs> <laughs> and I leave you with news that in Washington there's evidence that White House officials are taking no chances with their choice of new interns. <laughs> A photographer captures the split second before all diplomatic relations with Ghana are severed. <laughs> and there's relief at Royal Ascot as the Queen Mother's missing dentures at last turn up. <laughs> Good night.